What's going on guys and welcome to Praska Boys Garage. Now on this video, I intend to put a brand new wiring harness on this Chinese ATV that's right behind me. Now this video is gonna show you all the components and the breakdown to a wiring harness that comes in a complete kit and also what to look for and how to install it on the ATV itself. Now this will work for your 50, 70, 110 and even the 125 ATVs. Also keep in mind you can cross reference this video with the Chinese pit bike, dirt bike segment. So I'm gonna go through you guys each step of the way. If you have questions, please comment down below. I'll answer them as we go. Now to get started, I'm gonna show you a few things that I look for before ordering the wiring harness. Now the reason why I'm doing this ATV in particular is that the previous owner had once attempted to weld right in the back here where it broke, but didn't take off any of the fuel systems or any of the components that had fuel on them and started just welding away. Well, what happened was the whole thing went up in flames. All the wiring got completely destroyed. The thing was rendered totaled. Now, I got it back. I've done some work to it, and I'm to the point now where it's ready for wiring. And a lot of you guys, if you're like me when I started, wiring can be very intimidating. But I'm here to tell you, these brand new kits, they're pretty easy to work with if you know what to look for. So where do we get started? That's the first question. All right, now the first step of this process is, well, probably the easiest one, taking out all the old wiring. Very quick, very simple. We're all very good at deconstruction. But before you go ham on this thing, there's a few small things you need to start noting as you're going through that process. The first one is going to be this starter wire. All of the generic kits that come online, specifically eBay and Amazon, don't have that starter wire included, so make sure you leave that there. The next thing you need to look for is underneath this side cover, you need to know what kind of stator you're dealing with. So pop this cover off and look underneath. You can see inside there's two coil setup. Most of these ATVs have one of two options. It's a two coil setup or a six coil setup. And on here on the table, I'll show you the difference. This is your six. This is your two. You just need to notate which one you're going to order with your kit so it can be replaced properly. Now, the wires are exactly the same between both. So if you do order the wrong one, don't worry. If your old stator is good, that wire, or those wires will actually link right up to the new harness and color match. I have never run into an issue where your stator wires did not match the new aftermarket harness. So once you've established what harness to order and everything is gone, let's jump over to the package when it arrives. All right, so the first thing out is the uh, rectifier itself. Pretty simple little uh, device. All it does is converts your AC to DC. All right, this is your CDI box, and what it does is it actually sends the signal through the coil to do the spark. Next, I'll pull out, this is just the coil itself. And you can see the coil hooks up to the spark plug. Also, it came out as the spark plug. All right, this component itself is your starter relay. Uh, what it does is it sends a signal across these two bridges in order to turn the starter over. Got your new switch. This controls your on off, your lights, and your start button. You can see in this example, I did buy one that was a six coil only because I wanted an extra one for another product I have, and I already had a two coil here in the shop, so I'm gonna replace this with this one that I had on the table. So we'll set this over here and the wiring harness itself. And that's it. Now that it's all stretched out, I want to determine which way's front, which way's back. And you do that simply by just looking at the components itself. On the front side, you will notice there's a lot going on here. Uh, there's going to be two sets of white, blue, and greens. You can see those are male ends of white blues and greens those are your two front headlights those have to be the front of the atv on this side you will see that your battery systems are going to be in the back as well as that fuse and your rear brake light so you just got to lay it out and know which way is front and which way is back so i'm going to flip this over this way because that's how it's going to ride 
on our ATV. Now, what I wanna do is I'm gonna start plugging in all the components to the harness. It's pretty simple. Everything is pretty much plug and play by the components itself, but we'll just go through it together. Now, the first one I'm gonna grab is that rectifier. It is a four pin. So on this, I know it's towards the back. It is a four pin um, female and male end that link right up together. So we're gonna go ahead and plug that in just like that. Now we know that is where that belongs. It cannot go anywhere else. The next one I'm gonna grab is the CDI box. The CDI box on this kit is a five pin. So I know that it's on the front, but for you guys, there's the five pin connector. You've got the female and the male end. We're gonna marry those together. And now the CDI box is done. Next up is the coil itself. The coil is the only component other than the uh, stator that comes with out a male, female, white connector. These are just two metal connectors. It's a green wire and a black wire. You will notice on the front half of this harness, there's only one set of two wires that would marry up to that. That is gonna be a black and yellow and a green. You can see that the connectors, one male, one female, will link up. And same goes for this one. One male, one female, you cannot get it backwards. And we'll slip the plastic cover over those. So that's done. Now, one of the tricky, tricky parts for me was figuring out the starter relay because the starter relay has really a lot going on. You've got to have power coming directly from the starter and your thickest red power wire that goes directly to the battery is going to go to the other one. Now, all of these harnesses, they tape the two uh, ground and power wires to the harness. I take those off. So there's two round pieces, of, there's two pieces of tape. I'm gonna take that off completely. That way those are free. On the starter relay, that is a 10 millimeter nut. For right now, I'm just gonna hand tighten it. We know that that one power wire goes to one half. And the other power wire goes to the starter. We'll put that on when we get it closer to putting it on the ATV. Okay, the next one I'm gonna grab is the switch itself. There are two plugs that come off of this. Both of those are female ends and they link up to two of the plugs in the front. You can see the main one is a six pin. And so you look for your six pin. We'll go ahead and marry those two up together. And this is where it gets a little bit weird. The other switch that comes out of here, or the other plug, excuse me, that comes out of the switch is blue and brown, and it is a female end. So you wanna marry it up with a male end. Now, there are only two male ends that remain up front. One is red and black and green, and the other one is green and yellow and black itself. What we've determined is that the brake line is black and green and yellow. This is also black and green and yellow. So the black with the green and yellow is for a foot brake. This one up here is for a hand brake. And the one in the back is for the rear brake. So I know that this piece that goes to this switch cannot be for the brake. It has to get plugged into this green red and yellow. It does not match. It is the only one on the system that doesn't have a matching component, but obviously it has to go there because it's the only one that fits itself. Now, what I didn't see in this whole entire wiring harness is the key. And I don't know if I just missed it or if they just forgot it, but we did not pull a key out of here and we should have one. So I'm gonna look to see if I have any spares that fit this, but that is clearly something they've missed. Well, there you go. That's Chinese wiring kits for you. It did not come with a key, but luckily I had one in my drawer of all my miscellaneous wiring. Uh, hopefully this works, but we're gonna plug it into the component now and it does match up correctly. So hopefully that works. All the wires are the same, black, white, green, red, and, uh, and black all line up with that one. So I'm gonna call that good for now. Hopefully we don't see any issues with it later on. So the only wires you should have not hooked up to anything at this point 
are two sets of blue, green, and white. Those are both for your headlights if, you're, if your ATV has them. And one set of black with green and yellow. That is for a foot brake if you have a foot brake with a light indicator. So now that that's done, the only thing we haven't hooked up yet is, oh, well, I didn't do this. This is your relay. It has a two pin. It is green and red with yellow and red. There's that connector. So we're going to connect those together. So that's done. And then the stator itself. Now these stators, they come with an extra two wires. I don't necessarily know what they're for. Um, I've always just taken them out because they're not necessary. One's a black ground, one's a green and red. So I just go ahead and grab those, pull those right out because we will not be needing them for this application. And then this will get married all those colors into these five. But before I do that, I wanna actually install this into our case. All right, now we've gotta get the old stator out. There are just three eight millimeter bolts, one that holds the wire casings down, and then those two right there. There go, and that should pop right out. So we'll go ahead and set that off to the side. We'll grab our new one and put it right back in the way the old one came out. And this grommet should fit right into that groove because that's actually gonna get pinched between the case of the motor and this cover plate. And I'm also gonna hand tighten these just to make sure that they're nice and snug because the last thing we want is for that to come on loose. And those are good. All right, so let's get uh, resituated with the camera and get you guys lined back up so we can start putting this wiring harness on the ATV. Now quickly, before I do start putting the wiring harness on, I am gonna replace this starter motor. I do have a brand new one, so I'm gonna rip this thing out and put this one in. And one thing to note on this side cover, before I finish it down, the last bolt itself, I'm just gonna put in loosely. We have that black ground that has to go somewhere and I found that this is a good grounding point for the, for the wiring harness itself. So now I'm gonna bring that whole wiring harness over. <clears throat> We're gonna lay it all out and start getting everything put back together. All right, let's grab this harness. And we're just gonna lay the main harness right across, just like that. And remember, we gotta orientate it front to back so we know where we're getting lined up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of the stuff I know that's in the way and just move it out of the way. Uh, for instance, like the start button and the lights itself, we're gonna put that out of the way. Also the wire that comes up to the front, this was the brake line or the brake uh, wires, that's the green and yellow and the black, we're gonna set that out of the way. And the key. Set that up out of the way. So what that leaves us with is the coil itself. We're gonna take the spark plug that we got with the kit. We're gonna set that in the coil. Set that there for now. Those are, the front is done. Moving our way back to the back. We've got all of our stator wires. Now, you cannot mess this up as long as you are color specific. So blue and white needs to go with blue and white. Also has one male and one female connector. All right, so there's that. Also, we need to finish up the other half to this starter relay. So we're gonna take that other 10 millimeter off and we're gonna put that 
new starter cord with the new starter on. Snug those two down, so there's that. That leaves us with the back brakes and the safety harness line. We're gonna get those out of the way. And it's gonna leave us with our two battery cables and our ground. So like I said, we left this bolt for this ground specifically, so let's get that put on. And let's grab our battery. And this is important. You guys wanna make sure you have a good battery that's got a good charge to it. In this case, this is a brand new battery that I just got for this ATV specifically. I had it on the charger earlier. It is 100% charged and ready to go. It can be very frustrating to get through all this point and not have a good battery because you start thinking, what did I do wrong, rather than just being prepared. All right, there we go. Now, learn from my mistakes. This wiring harness has a safety feature built in where if you're not pushing down on the brake or if you're not holding the brake lever itself, um, it's not actually gonna turn the starter motor over. So you grab your two front wires up here and what those do is those will actually plug into your throttle cable assembly or your throttle assembly and, and it'll tie into the brake handle. And so by putting these two together, we're acting as if we're actually grabbing that brake. So here we go. Key is on, brakes down, starter button. And we're good. So now we'll let's check to see if we're getting any spark because that's most of the battle. We're gonna set it somewhere we've got a ground point for it. And we've got good spark. Now what I'm gonna do is put a little bit of fuel down the, uh, the spark plug hole and see if it'll actually fire the system. And for those of you that follow any of my builds, this is actually the first attempt at making this motor run after putting it in back in the ATV. So again, brake down, start button, here we go. Man, that feels good. Uh, okay, there we go, guys. So everything we know works except for this stupid switch. We're going to get the new one ordered. Or not ordered, excuse me. We're going to get the new one sent to us uh, because the manufacturer forgot it. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this thing ready to be cleaned up on the ATV. So what we're going to do is we're going to deconstruct what we've done and start getting it fitted. At this point, grab yourself some tie straps and some wire snips and uh, let's get going. All right, well, I'm gonna take you guys in for a close up and kind of what I'm doing with this assembling of the wiring harness. The first thing I'm gonna show you is this relay itself. What I've done is I've actually taken both the power wire that comes from the battery and the power wire that comes from the starter and ran it through the back of that casing hole. Uh, that's a cover that's gonna cover that all up to keep that nice and nice and neat and doesn't allow uh, water or anything else to get into it. Those two run through. Now, as far as these two terminals are concerned, it doesn't matter which one it's on. It, it can be in reverse order, so don't worry about that. Just get them in where they're comfortable and they don't get crimped up. Now, <clears throat> throughout putting these components in here, like this starter relay, like the magnifier and the CDI box, the ATV will have tabs. And when you took it apart, you may have noticed where those tabs were. But in this one, specifically that I'm working on, you'll see there's two tabs located right here, a here and a here tab. That is for the two tabs, as you can see, 
on the starter relay, one on this side and one on this side. It slides right in, we'll zip tie it down, we're good to go. As far as the magnifier is concerned, it's got just one bolt hole and you'll find a tab that looks an awful lot like this where you can just bolt it together and onto the ATV. And then the last one that I wanna talk about is the CDI box. There's gonna be usually the tab in the front, one tab that comes off. You're just gonna to wanna to, want to orientate the CDI box to make it make sense, excuse me, make it make sense with the wiring harness and how it wires to that. We're also gonna zip tie that down, that way that's all secure. So I'm gonna keep going through this on the time lapse, um, but just wanna let you guys know what's going on in this process. All right, guys, the harness is on and I'm very happy with the results. I'll take you in for one last look on how we got it all put together. As you can see, the majority of the wires are sitting back here by the battery box, but they're all neat, organized, and zip tied. So in the event we have to work on this thing in the future, we can easily get to it. And the nice thing is that body's gonna come in and actually cover the majority of this. That way it's finished and clean when it's all said and done. Uh, half the rectifier will show. I'm okay with that. I, I like the position and place where it is. Now the rest of this main harness does follow the body line all the way up. Out to the front and as you'll notice there are a few wires left unfinished and I'm not going to do that on this video uh, but I will just say it's a pretty easy process you plug in the headlights if you've got a rear brake for your foot that plugs in there we're good to go so once you've got everything on the ATV exactly where you want it all zip tied on and ready we're going to test it one more time to make sure the fit and finish is complete all right like always make sure the key is on we're going to act as if we're pulling that brake handle by putting those two together. Hit the go button one last time. And we're all set. That is exactly what we're looking for. So that wiring harness is complete. Thank you guys for watching. Now that the wiring is complete, hopefully I was able to answer some of the questions you may have had in your wiring process. As far as the harness is concerned, I'm a big fan of just replacing everything. These Chinese ATVs are notorious for having bad wiring. And a lot of times when you pick them up, somebody else has already tried to splice and cut and mess some things up. And rather than try and go through their wiring mistakes, I just like starting brand new from the beginning. The wiring harnesses are around $30, so it's not an expensive thing to do, especially when you start thinking about buying each part individually to find why you don't have a spark or why you don't have lights or why you don't have a starter. There's just so much that can go wrong. It's nice to start from ground zero. If you guys like this video, make sure you hit the like button. If you have any questions at all, comment down below. I respond back as soon as I can. And you guys have been great to my channel. I want to continue these videos on. This one is currently in the build process. I'll be loading this video a few weeks after this one. You guys have been great. Thank you so much. We'll see you on the next one.